everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and I'm here today with day 20 of the prompt of hashtag Art Journal Habit 2018 which is a month long daily art journaling challenge with the prompts brought to you from Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group. So today's prompt is Bush and the first thing I thought of was like trying to make some sort of a landscape, maybe with watercolor or something, of that the bush-type landscape in Africa, which I've never seen, but I was going to look at some pictures, and then I came up with a different idea. You know, sometimes you don't go with the first idea, <laughs> especially when it's a really weird one. This one was not weird, but um, yeah, the second idea I had was to make, you, you know, what I've always wanted in my yard is those, like, shaped bushes. Like they're shaped like animals or they're shaped, I think they're called topiary. And it's it's a whole process of trimming and trimming over years of time. And maybe they have like a wire structure underneath and the, the bushy leaves go through it. And you you know, there's, there's all kinds of animal shapes or um, sometimes multiple bushes to that make that make a sea serpent or something. That would be so cool. But you know what? That would take so much time and effort. And I don't think cactus really wanted to grow into shapes like that. So as much as I thought that was a really cool idea and I thought maybe I might do that, then I started thinking about something that really would be attainable to me if I took some classes or, um, you know, learned about it. And that is the, the shaping of teeny tiny little trees or bushes into bonsai. And... <clears throat> Somewhere, I think it was in, I think it was when I was in California a couple years ago. I think we went to, um, yeah, anyway, there was a ton of them, all different types of bonsai trees. I probably saw maybe 30 or 40 of them made out, out of all different types of plants. And some of them were more a plant that I would call a bush, like, you know, um, maybe a juniper or something. And then Others were made from cedar or just, I mean, they had all kinds of them and they were so well done and they just had them all displayed everywhere. And I, I don't know who makes those or, I mean, it must be somebody's full-time job to take care of those, I'm sure. But really cool. And that's what I decided to put on my page was um, a bonsai, which might be a bush or might be a tree, but mine's going to be a bush because today's prompt is bush. Yeah. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so um, after all that was said, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the first thing I did was to kind of make a drawing in the background. And it it's kind of the, I, the idea of like a, a still life or something. Only, of course, I'm going to do collage because that's what I love. That's the thing I love the most. So I, I made the kind of sketchy drawing um, on the background. And then... I took a piece of deli paper, which is a lightweight, um, it's kind of the weight of tissue paper, but it doesn't tear easily and it doesn't, it isn't bothered by wet media. Uh, it's, it's something that they use to wrap sandwiches in or fish and chips, like in the basket when you get fish and chips, um, you might get a piece of deli paper. So it's, it's interesting paper and it's something that I think every mixed media artist should have for gel printing and for these type of applications that I use it for, which is to make uh, make it easier for me to do shaped collage or uh, paper painting style collage. So I took a piece of deli paper and I put it over my drawing and I drew with a Posca pen, which it, you could use any permanent pen, and um, drew around my bonsai tree drawing to transfer it to that paper. I could have just drawn it right on the paper, but I kind of wanted it to be, uh, I wanted to see how it would look on the page, how it would lay out on the page. So then, um, now I'm collaging my background and I'm using some gel print, um, that bluish stuff in the background is gel print. And then 
uh, I'm making these three rectangles to kind of sort of give you the idea of art in the background while not being perfect or um, distinct at all, like just in the background, but just to make the background more interesting. Um, I cut these different colors of, um, one of them is like scrap paper from, from different projects and another one is a print. And then this one I think is, uh, this third one I think is a print also, like a cleanup print off a of six by six. I like to use my six by six gel plate as kind of a palette. And then I, I put the, the paint on it and then roll it with my brayer onto a larger one sometimes. And sometimes those cleanups, uh, just cleaning off that six by six of all the paint buildup is really pretty. So once my I was happy with my background, and by the way, the table portion of uh, that background is made out of packaging. And the packaging had what looked like a wood grain on it. I pulled the top layer of the paper off. It was it was messy. It tore. And I was hoping to get like a full sheet of it. But it, it started to come off really nicely. And then it stopped. But I didn't want the thick cardboard packaging. I just wanted the, the printed part on the top. So sometimes you can use something like that in your collage. Which is what I did. I just took pieces of that and made my wood grain table um, for my bonsai bush. <laughs> it's a bonsai bush, people. It's not a bonsai tree. <laughs> okay, it's a bonsai tree. So now um, I wanted to make a bright color pot for my um, bonsai to be in. So I, I drew on another scrap of deli paper around the pot and then I collaged that with some red and pinks and a little bit of, um, it's hard to see, but it's polka dotted pink and white scrap of washi tape. You know, you can sometimes just save that washi tape when someone sends you something and they've used washi tape to, you know, seal the envelope or to tape something together. That stuff comes off really easy. The glue on it is definitely not permanent. So, you can sometimes save those pieces and use them in your collage as well. I like to recycle stuff. I like to reuse stuff. I think that there's way too many things being made out there out of raw materials. And if we could just think more about using up the raw materials in their second life or third life or fourth life, recycling them, that would be much better than making something new. So I always, um, I'm always interested in recycling things into my art that, that makes me happy, makes me feel like I did something for Mother Earth. <laughs> Although it's a teeny tiny small thing, at least I didn't throw that thing away. I, you know, kept it and I'm using, reusing it. <clears throat> so here's some other different bits and pieces. Um, when I have little pieces left over of my painted paper or, or gel printed paper or even packaging or things like that, I, I, occasionally not often enough take all those scraps and separate them into colors and that's what I call my color boxes which are a plastic box that um, many cinnamon rolls come in that my mom likes and when she's done she washes it out for me and I keep them I have a lid and I just have a whole stack of these separated by color so I got out the browns um, box and the greens box and I'm just tearing little bits and pieces and collaging these onto the areas where those colors would go onto my um, bonsai tree drawing. So now is when you ask, why didn't you just do it right on top of the paper? Why didn't you just use the, the idea of paper painting collage right onto your paper? <clears throat> and this is where my little technique of coming and using this deli paper comes in. And I do this a lot something that I came up with a while ago because I've been doing paper painting collage for a while. And I usually, I can, I do very large ones. And sometimes you just get tired of tearing the teeny, teeny, tiny pieces, trying to make them straight and gluing them in place. If you have something like this, you can be a lot more free and a lot more thinking about where the colors are going and things like that, rather than thinking about trying to get that little piece to stick with inside that line. It's like the opposite of coloring inside the lines. 
I'm coloring outside of the lines, but that doesn't matter because the deli paper is so thin and um, just, you know, it's hardly even there that when I cut this out, which I'm going to do next, it, it looks as if I've collaged within the lines and I can get a very smooth edge. Sometimes I don't want that. Sometimes I want a torn edge. A lot of time when I'm collaging, I want a torn edge. But in this case, I'm making <clears throat> something that I want recognizable. And so this is how I do it. And there's a lot of other videos on my channel. If you are interested in this style of collage, um, you can just kind of do a search on paper painting collage and you'll come up with a lot of videos on my channel. There's a lot of them. A lot of them are bigger pieces, um, canvases and things that I've done as gifts or for commissions. But this, this is real fun to me. A lot of people don't like this type of tedious work, but having the, the paper there and being able to cut it out does cut out some of the tediousness and fussiness of the, of the process. And it still gives the same look. So I love it. I think it's really cool. <laughs> it's like just something that I enjoy immensely. So now I'm going to um, trim off the excess off my background here. The, my junk journal, this is a junk journal that I'm using for this challenge. It's made out of um, mailers that came in the mail during the most recent primary election. And what a good use of reusing those things. I wish they would stop sending them to me. I wish they would stop wasting money and resources and everything to just not send me that stuff. Most of it's negative. It's like, oh, you know, this one said something about that one. It just, I don't even read it. It does not influence me in any way of how I, I vote. I look at, I read the stuff. I don't need to know, you know, something about some unsavory thing about someone. It just really, it annoys me. But anyway, I thought that the background needed a little bit of calming down. So I used some Titan Buff or Unbleached Titanium acrylic paint mixed with water and just just kind of brushed it around while I was giving my bonsai tree a little bit of time to dry. And then now I've got some very tiny scissors and I've cut it out. And I've, I've of course, not made you sit there and watch it. It was, it was a lot of cutting um, in between each branch and things like that were a little bit fussy. And <laughs> so I'm going to make you watch that. And then now I'm just taking my Liquitex matte medium and I'm gluing everything down to the page, making sure that there are no creases or wrinkles and, you know, going carefully. This, this piece, the way I had to cut it apart and cut all the insides out and everything, it needs careful consideration as I'm gluing it down to make sure that it doesn't get distorted in any way. So, um, <clears throat> Sorry about my throat. Um, I'm back from one of my trips and I'm going at the end of the week on another trip. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm still trying to keep up with all these pages uh, and daily videos. It's, it's crazy. Um, had I realized I was going to be gone 18 days of 30 and during this challenge, I would have not have taken it up. But once I say I'm going to do something, especially when it's my challenge, you know, <laughs> like in my group, mine and Peg's we share, but yeah, I got to do it. So I will see you tomorrow again with the next page. Um, I just have to get them done in advance so that I can go on another trip. So my next step was to do the shadows. You know, I'm kind of obsessed with shadows. I think that this does so much for a composition making your focal image stand out and but yet making it stand out but yet making it integrate into the page because if you just stick something on there it just looks like a sticker uh which is why stickers are called stickers right because you stick them on there <laughs> you know what i'm saying though it needs it needs integration and there's different ways of doing integration in collage this is just a way that i like to do with my paper paintings so this time for my shadows, I'm using my Pentel pocket brush pen that I got recently on Art Retreat and an uh, Aquash Pentel water brush, which is a water tank brush that has water inside and then a synthetic brush. And that 
Pentel Pocket Brush is India ink, which is a permanent ink. But if I get the water on it quickly enough, I can blend it out. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of writing a little section of it on and then blending it out. In some cases, I'm blotting up the excess water and ink if I thought that it got too dark. Um, it's very dark at first, and then it starts to become fainter as it dries. So this is a process that I think is important to do on your projects. If you're gluing something to something, you should try to integrate it in some way, whether it's shadows and highlights, whether it's um, using finger painting to integrate around something or adding a little bit of stenciling over it. Um, it just is something that makes your piece appear more finished and more intentional in your collage. So yeah, I think it's important. I do it all the time. It's rare that I stick something on and don't put something around it or integrate it in some way. I'm sure it's happened. You know, if you went and looked at my 500 videos, <laughs> you might find something where I didn't do this, but I don't think it's, there's very many and they were, they're probably pretty old videos. Um, I'm going to need to start weeding out my channel and organizing it a little bit better, which I plan to do in December or January. Um, New Year's coming up. Got a lot of little housekeeping things to do. So I'm continuing to shadow. Um, this is, you know, it's a process, especially this image had a lot of shapes in it that needed to be emphasized. So yeah, if you're enjoying this, this video series, don't forget it to, to, wow, I can't speak today. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below um, about the project or about something or about paper painting if you have questions about that. Um, of course, you can share this or pin it on Pinterest if you want to remember about it later. And all those things really help my channel, so I appreciate it. So now I'm bringing in the white Posca pen, which is an acrylic paint pen, and just adding little uh, highlights. And when you're adding highlights, you just need to consider where you think your light source is coming from. In this case, the light source must have been coming from the left hand upper top down on my my tree and so that's how I'm doing my highlights and of course I'm blending those with the aquash brush as well works out really well because you can get a blended look with uh, instead of you know a line or a dot something I enjoy although sometimes I just put lines or dots too you know it just depends on the project and let's see, what did I do? What else did I do? I think this is about done. Seems like it. The video seems to be running down. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, highlights. Then I think I went around the edge with an ink pad. I did. Okay, there we go. Um, that's a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. It's permanent ink. And then I used my white Stabilo All pencil. Yeah, I know, white, white graphite, very strange. Um, to just add a few more highlights that I wanted to be more kind of diffused looking and touched up a few more things and that was it. So thanks for watching and I will see you again tomorrow with the day 21 page. Bye-bye.